So one of the main things you keep asking yourself is, how do I go about storing more canned goods, more supplies, more dry goods? What do I have to do? What is it that I have to do to make room so that I can succeed in doing this? And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you what I did. As you all can see, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And what I want to show you today is some of the things that I've done to secure more space in my home to make sure that I have things that I need to survive. Any type of a natural disaster, uh, SHTF, whatever it could be, folks. All right. We have to plan ahead. We have to make sure that we're prepared and we have to have things that we will eat in an emergency type situation or on a daily basis and you can use it as a working pantry like I have done here. Okay, now we're going to start off with the rack itself. I did purchase this metal rack. It does hold up to 200 and some odd pounds per shelf, all right, which is really good. I got this rack at Walmart for $59, all right. So <clears throat> it's a five tier. They have them in four tier, a five tier, and then I think you can get one that's a little bit bigger. Uh, but this is all that I really need. I do need to get another rack so that I can put it next to it. And I need to reorganize a little bit here as far as what I do have. Over here, I do have all my five-gallon buckets. Now, some of my buckets are food grade. Some of them aren't. Now, these are full of a lot of the dry goods and everything else that I've put up in Marlar bags, vacuum seal bags, and everything else. I store them all in there. I store them in a spare room that I have because this way here it is temperature controlled, which is very important, folks. You want to store it in a cool, dry place. So it's temperature controlled in here. Our house usually stays anywhere from uh, 76 to 72 degrees. Depends on who's home. If I'm home, it stays a lot cooler. If my wife's here, it stays a little bit warmer, but it never really goes over too much that temperature. So we are in the controlled environment. Do not store these in your garage, especially if you live in a hot climate. That is the worst thing you can do. You might as well just take all this stuff and throw it in the trash can because it will not last. All right, it has to be stored in a, a, a controlled environment this way here that you maximize what you're going to get out of all this kind of stuff. Now, I do have a wide a range of different type of products. Okay, over here, I have some. I didn't get everything out for this video, but I mean, I have stuff that is all put up and everything else, but I do have some of my, my dried goods and everything else, uh, potatoes, uh, potato shakes, onions, uh, dried milk, um, coffee, you know, an avid coffee drinker. So I always make sure I have freeze dried coffee and everything else. Powdered coffee mate. Now a lot of people just don't think about this. All right. So if something happens and all of a sudden you don't have power for weeks, you know, the coffee mate, well, with all the crap that's in it, it probably lasts for quite a while, but to fall back to powder, this is going to last for a long time, as long as you can keep the moisture out of it. Um, once the moisture does get to it, it's going to be like your sugar and your salt and your flour and stuff, and it's going to turn rock solid. You'll have to break it up to use it. So as long as you keep the moisture out of it, there you go. You got stuff for your coffee. And you can get these in any type of flavors. They do have different flavors and stuff in the stores where you can buy these products like this. All right, but you make sure that you have, if you're a coffee drinker, make sure you have freeze-dried coffee. That'll last for over 30 years. Now, you can take it out of that container. I haven't opened that container, um, but eventually I probably will take it out of that container, put it in a Marlar bag with a oxygen absorber and stuff, and that stuff is probably going to last just as long as more than likely honey and syrup and stuff of those natures, okay? So, <clears throat> moving on over here, I've got a lot of the, the way I do my shelves is I do the, the heaviest and I work my way up. All right, so on the top shelf here, this is all just basically dry goods. Uh, you know, you got your crackers, pasta. I got some oatmeal. Now, a lot of this is a working pantry. All right, we use a lot of these products in our daily use. I put all the canned goods and stuff in here and freed up a lot of space in the main pantry in the kitchen for a lot of a lot of dry goods and stuff because the shelves just don't support the weight. That's what you got to be very careful of is how much weight you're putting on your shelves. All right. So we work our way down. You know, I've got soups. I've got beans. I've got uh, olives, mushrooms, uh, butter, 
packs of tuna fish, barbecue sauce, mayonnaise. Um, I mean, you have to put in here what you like, what you're going to use, especially if you're going to use your stockpile as a working pantry. Remember that. Okay, down below, I've got like Chef Boyardee, I've got uh, Chunky, Campbell's Soups, I've got Denti Moore, corned beef, vanilla sausages, corned beef hash. Then I got pulled pork, pulled beef. Um, I got tuna fish, chicken, salmon, sardines, hams, all this different types of stuff, you know, and that's all on this shelf here. Down below, I have all my like tomato sauces and stuff. Now, tomato sauces don't last as long as any of these other products past their date, all right? It's because the acid in those type of products. So you even have to watch like your beefaroni and those type of things because the, the tomato sauce. All right, so they will last past the date. The whole trick is to store the stuff in a controlled environment. And this way here, hopefully you can maximize even longer out of your shelf life than what the date is. Remember the date is only there for a best buy date for the taste and everything else. Things will be good past those dates. Some people have a very hard time doing that. They swear by those dates. If it gets to that date, they have to throw it in the trash can. And you don't have to do that, folks, because it's just a waste of your money. All right, so then we got some beans and everything else. I got some dried beans here. Um, these are uh, kidney beans. I got some peas and stuff. I still have to put those up in Marlar bags and get those all put away because I have a whole ton of them on this side over here. On the bottom shelf is all my potatoes. Now, your canned potatoes are great. All right. The only trick to canned potatoes is, here's a quick tip, is if you're going to use them, try to rinse them first because then they, to me, they just taste better if you rinse them and let them set there in a strainer and drain. They just taste so much better, folks. So, you know, if you're going to use your canned potatoes, that's the way to do it. But you can get them sliced, diced, and whole. You can do whatever. You can make anything you want. You know, i got all my vegetables down here from peas and spinach and carrots and artichokes and corn and green beans and water chestnuts. And you can put in your working pantry for your disaster preparedness, whatever it is you want, you just don't have to stick to green beans or corn, you know? I mean, if you like asparagus, I do have some asparagus down there. Whatever it is, put it into your working, working pantry. Now, you notice on the very bottom down here underneath, I have three small cases of water. These are 24 packs of water, okay? Three of them fit right underneath there. So I always have a backup because in my pantry, I, I always keep five cases, of water in my pantry at all times all right because you just never know when something's going to happen i like to be prepared with the water situation now i do have ways i can filter my water and do all that kind of stuff but i want to have a nice little backup so these are like the emergency cases all right i keep three of those down there off to the side here i keep a few things a gatorade and a sprite all right moving on over this way is where i have i, I got out a lot of my different freeze-dried foods that I have bought over the, say, the years, okay? Now, I have a, quite a few of the Mountain House, all right? Because Mountain House, you can you can get those suckers right in uh, Walmart. And if you have the money, every time you go in there, you should pick up one. It's going to cost you 8 to 10 bucks. Pick one up and throw it in there because they're, they're two meals. You know, Backpacker's Pantry, same thing, you know? You can get those right in Walmart if you're in there doing your shopping or if you're ordering or whatever else, all right? I just doesn't want to stand up you know <clears throat> for patriots food i got my 72 hour food kit all right i give one of those away to a lucky winner and this way here you know you got 72 hours of food in that one little bag right there all right there you go and then for all you military people out there you probably all know what these are your handy dandy mres and i know you all love them i actually have to say that my son did buy me a whole bunch of these mres and uh <clears throat> when he was down here, we actually did a taste test with them, and they were pretty good. They've come a long ways from years ago. So if you heat them up properly and the whole other, you know, you do everything you're supposed to do and follow the directions, they really don't have that bad of a taste. They're eatable, all right? It's not a gourmet meal, but they're eatable. All right, now in my buckets, I have all my dry goods, like I did say. All right, I have everything from rice. I have rice, I have sugar, I have flour, I have oats, I have beans of all kinds. Um, you know, it's whatever you're gonna use. 
I store everything in here. I don't have to worry about any bugs, anything else. The only thing you have to make sure that you do buy is a handy dandy lid opener. And this way here, you can pick these suckers right up. Um, Home Depot, I think they're like a buck or something. Now Walmart sells them the whole nine yards. We just gonna have to have a, a lid opener so that you can pop that off. And then you need a hammer or a rubber mallet, whichever one you choose. I use a rubber mallet, but you could use a hammer. Uh, you could use a piece of wood, um, whatever to bang the lid back on to seal it back up. And I do have everything broken down. Everything is written what is on there. Uh, like uh, this one right here is the 72 hour food kit, how to build it, which I'll put a link to that right here so that you can go back and watch that so you can build your own 72 hour food kit with the foods that you wanna eat for you and your family. So this has just been a quick little um, video on how I do my disaster preparedness, my food and everything else. I took the a wall of the spare room and I, I bought a shelf and put in here a nice sturdy metal shelf. I, I wouldn't go with the flimsy, you know, plastic shelves and stuff um, because you're putting a lot of weight on here with these canned goods, folks. So you really want to be careful. If you do have kids, they do come with the tethers that you can take and tether these things off to the walls if you can find the studs, if you have a stud finder. And this way here, you can secure this so your child didn't come in here if you did not know it and try climbing on this to get to a box of uh, crackers or, or something on the top shelf. You know what I'm saying? Kids are notorious for that. So that's something you want to be very careful of. You know, <clears throat> this tote right down here, just in case anybody wants to know, that is all my extra emergency supplies as far as first aid and that type of stuff. So yes, you have a first aid kit and everything else, but in there is all the extra first aid stuff that you may need. Now in that tote also is extra soap, um, hand sanitizer, um, gloves, and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of your hygiene products I have extra of in here as far as all my extra stuff to replenish my first aid kit in a case of a major emergency and I had to use it I have more in here to replace it with so I'm prepared for the next disaster without having to go to the store which is the whole key to survival right now <clears throat> I haven't seen these online for a while and it, um, I got these on Amazon two years ago and these are the Wazi little tablets that you can soak in water and you get a towel so you could you know if you go to the bathroom you can use these you can also use them if you needed to to kind of wash up freshen up or something in an emergency situation there's 500 of those suckers in here all right so if you're crammed on space for toilet paper and stuff for and if you're putting it away for an emergency situation you might want to go online and see if you can pick these up i don't know if you still can or not um the last time that i did look they were not available but this is after the whole charlie victor 19 thing so things are starting to come back on the shelves and back online so maybe now's the time to get out there and stock up before the next major disaster comes knocking on our doors and everything goes away again uh, which could be coming in the near future we just don't know um, i have worked on getting my crystal ball back so that i could come and tell you good news or bad news but uh, they told me they couldn't fix it so things that you can do you can buy yourself a shelf you can take a wall in your spare room and you can put all your nice food products and everything in here and you make sure it's nice and sturdy make sure that you start with the heavy and work your way up light stuff on the top you have all your dry goods your freeze-dried foods make sure if you're if you're doing the mylar bags if you're doing the vacuum sealing and everything else i would highly suggest that you store them in the buckets you can buy just regular buckets get them at home depot lowe's some of the bakeries and stuff if you contact them they may let you know if they have some they might even give them to you for free so it's just something that you want to think about you know this way here they're protected from bugs they're protected from you know rodents anything like that if you have those type of problems make sure that you're storing all this stuff in a controlled environment a cool dry place is ideal the cooler the better and this way here everything will survive the whole situation of survival 
So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me for this video today. I hope that everybody out there thrives to survive. Make sure that you are prepping. Make sure you're staying ahead of the game. Make sure you're catching all those deals. And when you do, make sure you do something like this so that you can buy those deals and put it up for you and your family so that you are prepared. Till next time, folks. I will catch all of you on the flip side. Thank you.